This podcast is created for adult audiences only and contains content that may be alarming to some viewers. Listener discretion is advised. Any badass views or opinions about to hear are those of the hosts that do not represent those of the people, institutions, or organizations that the podcast may or may not be associated with. So just don't be a dick. You know what you're getting yourself into. Weird. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to Girls Gone Weird. How are you, Danielle? Wonderful. And how are you, Nicole? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. This is something I'll remind people because I always call myself Denny and Nicole always calls me Danielle. So you're going to get used to that because she refuses to call me by my nickname. <laughs> That's true. She wants me to, but she's we'll stubborn. See. She's stubborn. I'm very stubborn. Very yeah. stubborn. <laughs> well, this is uh, an exciting week and an exciting episode. It is, it is Halloween 2023, um, and this is my favorite holiday. I mean, isn't it most everybody's? It's 100% my favorite holiday. It's the greatest. I know. Do you guys, like, do anything in Alabama? Like, is there any fun Halloween things in the middle of a rural area? Since we grew up and- more near a city... And, and we both live area, in a country no. now. Yeah, no, not in a rural area. I mean, there's nowhere to trick or treat. So if we want to mm-hmm. trick or treat with Violet, we have to take her into town. So we'll frequently drive into Birmingham, or at least we used to. But now that she's in kindergarten and it's like on a weeknight, I don't, I'm not quite sure what we're gonna do. Um, maybe yeah, just here party over the weekend. I don't know. Yeah, it's um, what's weird in here. So I don't know if cities are like this now, but living in the country. They have the kids that don't, they don't go door to door anymore. People just like go into a parking lot of like a church with like their candy and it's called like trunk or treat. treat. Yep. And then gets like a new thing. And it's really depressing for me because I think about like, oh, I loved Halloween as a kid. I loved going door to door, like starting as early as you can and then staying out like until pretty much like you have so much candy and you're like walking by yourself and (laughs) no parents around at 10 o'clock at night when you're like seven and holding all the candy on your back. I'm sad my kids never get experience this trauma, but yet the best it's thing so ever. It's so nostalgic. It's so nostalgic. It's so good. <laughs> I know. I always use a pillowcase. Too. A pillowcase is what you need, not because you can't fit enough candy in the little lanterns and you have big pillow. No. Like a dirty stained pillowcase. Yeah. Probably with <laughs> like, blood and other secretions. Yeah. It's perfect. Just, kidding. Just blood. <laughs> so did you, Do you have... have- Oh, go ahead. <laughs> the questions. After you. I've been so excited keeping this thing from Nicole because I went to Renaissance Festival today in North Dakota. It's my first time going to the North Dakota one because I'm a huge Rennie person. Um, we have that in Minnesota, and I really like it because it is kind of spooky. I went really witchy this year. And I know Nicole's not a fan of Ouija board, but I found a adorable handmade pink and purple glitter Ouija board. Fuck so, off. I know. Look at Whoa. how cool that is. Someone made that like a young girl, like a like preteen girl really? makes these and sells it's them there. Planchette. It's a huge wonder, planchette though. Is it's it adorable? It's really yeah. small. Like look at my hand. Like it's a really cute small one. It's tiny. But yeah. oh, is, it's adorable. That is cute. It is cute. I'm all about aesthetically Ouija speaking. I love Ouija. Sp- I love Ouija boards. Mm-hmm. But I will not use them. See, no, I know everyone's scared to use them, and I love them. Like, I love them. But people won't even let them in their house. I mean, there's a process. There's a process. If you know how to properly protect yourself and cleanse your space and close out the board and do the whole ritual, okay, maybe. But they're just – it's fucking unpredictable. You could have a 100 great – a hundred great sessions and then one and you're fucked <laughs> because you opened a door <laughs> and the fucking weird demon with the giant dong is stuck in your house now. You say, Just... yo, demon, it's me. No. Nicole, what's up, Holmes? Not into it. No. <laughs> not, not into inviting some demons to hang out? No. Not, especially not the ones with the giant dongs. I truly have no one in my life, even you, my spooky friend, that will do a Ouija board with me. Like, I'm the only person. Like, I've even joked, um, because I do drag which a lot of people probably know, 
on here and we get to stay in different towns and they'll like give us a house from the town or like the hotel. So we stay in like this spooky ass house and I'm like, I'm bringing a Ouija board, obviously. Number one in my head, I'm bringing a fucking Ouija board. This is the old ass house. This nope. is going to be fantastic. I told the queens that I work with and they're just like, no, bitch, <laughs> like Hard you're no. not doing that. They're like, we're going to get a motel if you do this. And I'm nope. like, what? I woke up <laughs> and one of my queens, Moxie, had the salt around her door. I was like, <laughs> I her. didn't bring it. I did not bring bring the Ouija board, but I might just show them Good. this so they know what's coming next. <laughs> yeah. They're going to throw salt right in your face. <laughs> I know. But shout out to my Ouija board lovers since I'm the only one I know. They're amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have plans for Halloween? Are you, do you have a costume planned? Does Ella have a costume planned? She keeps going back and forth about wanting us to be like Little Mermaid since that's the thing now. Like doing where she's like Ariel. I'm Ursula. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm always the evil one. And then Daddy's Eric. So she's, But now she's been liking Barbie. She just, you know, went from Little Mermaid to Barbie mm-hmm. now. It's yeah. a Barbie movie. So yeah. now she wants to be Barbie. Daddy can be Ken. And then I get to be weird Barbie. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's perfect for you guys, though. I know, oh, it's right? so perfect. So I mean, Mark's already blonde. Hair. Yeah, yeah he's, he's cut, cut his hair. He's hair. blonde. She would be yep. a perfect little Barbie. She and would. you are so clearly weird Barbie. I would be weird Barbie. And it's yeah. so on brand for us, too, now with the podcast. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, so it might be that. It went from that to Barbie. So I think everyone's going to be Barbie this year. But my family That's is a true. costume family, and we'd fuck them all up with costumes. Like, we don't That's true. Them. You would dominate. You would dominate. Yeah. I agree. Right. I agree. Uh, Violet makes up her mind, like, a year in advance. Like, the day after Halloween in previous years, she's like, next year I'm doing this. And she sticks with it. Uh, and Yeah. So this year, or last year, I should say, she decided that this year she's going to be a witch. She's very stereotypical. <laughs> Last year, she was Marshall from Paw Patrol. Um, That's a classic. Oh witch is a classic. She wants to be a witch. And I found this great handmade witch's costume on Kidizen, like the secondhand kids app. Um, so it's like a cool witch dress that nobody else is going to have. It's handmade. And it's purple, her favorite color. And it's beautiful. Um, and she usually, again, like Ella does, she decides what she wants me to be and what she wants Daniel to be. Yeah. Um, you got it. She, when you're a mom, that happens. That's <laughs> it's true. Just like, this Although, is what you are. This is your life now. She's been a little flaky about what we're going to be. She's very confident about her witchiness. Um, she talked about me possibly being a vampire, which I'm totally into. I can do that. Um, I have a really awesome set of fangs that I've had since I was like 15 that I somehow still have. I love that she's liking the classics. Yeah. Yeah, Elle always has the groups. Like, she doesn't have a separate. Like, last year we were Spice Girls, so her daddy had to uh-huh. be Sporty Spice, and then I had to be Ginger, and she had to be Baby Spice. But <laughs> all of her wonderful. things, she... Yeah. My husband looks great in a tube top and drag. Um, yes, he does. He does. He looks way better than I do in drag. It's very upsetting as as his lady. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, it's always, like, group stuff like that, so... Yeah, I love it. Yeah, always the one out, so... Yeah, so Halloween episode, I thought that this would be a perfect time to introduce a new episode series that we are going to start, um, which in the spirit of Girls Gone Weird and King of Girls Gone Wild, um, instead of showing us your boobs, we want you to show us your booze. We want you to send us all your listener story of spooky tales. What if I secretly want tit photos sent to us, though? You know, show us your booze, <laughs> show us your boobs. We will take either. Yeah. Either or. Please send them all. Um, but yeah, <laughs> send us your spooky listener tales, and we may read them on the podcast. Um, they do not necessarily need to be ghost or spirit encounters. Um, they can be anything. and They can be uh, UFO, spooky UFO encounters. They can be encounters with... Um, killers if you've got stories if you're connected to a killer in some sort of way um just anything weird and wild and crazy that you think wow this is totally insane and i need to tell somebody about it please tell us and i love secrets i love a good secret that you keep and you haven't told anyone Ooh. especially if it's a dark one yeah. those are fun and if you want to be anonymous 100 percent, absolutely you, you can stay anonymous to be just anonymous. let us know yep or if you want your name be like yo shout out to yeah. It's K-Money out in Westchester. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, K-Money. Yeah. Um, 
Yes. So if you would like to stay anonymous or if you would like us to share your information, please uh, note that in the email. And we would really appreciate it if you would share your pronouns as well, because we would like to address you properly. Um, and that's important to us as well. Um, and you can email them to girls gone weird email at gmail.com. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Show us your booze. Um, yeah. first. And the fun part is this is all Nicole. I haven't heard any of these. So this is the first time I will also hear these. Yes. So, we keep them private. Just so you know. They come into the email and yeah. I snatch them and I put them in a private folder. Um, so that she gets to hear it fresh with fresh ears and then we will discuss. So this is all a surprise for her. So excited. Yeah. Um, little shout out to, um, again, I've talked about it. My favorite podcast, Two Girls, One Ghost. This is what they do a lot. They do, um, encounters episodes. Um, they do strictly usually do sometimes, I mean, I guess sometimes they'll do UFOs and, and other anomalies. Um, but they tend to stick with ghosts, but I'd like to go all over the map. I don't care if it's weird and it's wild. If you just want to send a tip pic, that's fine. <laughs> I'm trying to get tip pits. I'm just trying tick to get tits. <laughs> tick pits. You know, like the pit that's between like your tit and your arm when you get that fat <laughs> over there? That's the that's picture it. I want. <laughs> I want tit pits. Tick pits. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so yeah, so I have three listener stories I have gathered that I'd like to read to you and everybody tonight that I think were super interesting. Um, so let's just go ahead and, uh, start. Are you ready? All right. K money from Westchester. Let's Here we go. K money. So for the first, uh, email, Spencer emailed us and the subject of the email was rock hounding find led me to meet with a sleep paralysis demon. Uh huh. All right. Okay. So this came in a couple weeks ago, and I immediately flagged it because I wanted to read it because I thought it was really interesting. Um, here we go. It says, "Hey y'all, I saw on Facebook that you were in search of people's personal stories based on the supernatural. I saw the post and thought, what a perfect opportunity to share one of mine. My name is Spencer, and I live in Tuscaloosa, Alabama." This story takes place in the ever so wonderful year that was 2020. Um, I had just finished my spring semester college classes for the year and was trying to find things to keep myself busy during the COVID shutdown. I picked up a hobby of collecting various rocks, minerals, fossils, and some Native American artifacts, such as arrowheads. On this particular day, I was at the small bed and breakfast my aunt and uncle owned at the time. And my mom worked as a housekeeper, and I would sometimes tag along and help if I had no classes or other things going on at the time. I was scouring the parking lot to see if I can find any interesting specimens for my collection. At first, I only found a few pieces of granite and slag glass. Uh, Nothing too special or exciting, but still intriguing to say the least. That was until I just so happened to catch the corner of my eye, something sticking straight up out of the dirt at the bottom of a large nearby tree. My curiosity grew as to what the mysterious small item was, and I decided to dig it out. When I approached the tree and dug out the item, I just saw that it was an arrowhead, an incredible find, and I snagged it, and I put it in my pocket to take back home with me to clean it up and put it amongst the other ones in my collection. This find of mine would turn from very exciting to rather terrifying in just a matter of short time. That night, after getting showered and brushing my teeth, I crept into bed and I prepared myself for a nice, peaceful slumber, only to receive the biggest nightmare of my life. All I remember was opening my eyes and waking up, or halfway waking up, and not being able to move. My limbs and neck felt so stiff and dead that no matter what efforts I put in to move them, they would not budge. The only thing being able to move were my eyes. In the wandering, they picked up a shadow in the corner of my room that did not quite match up or register with the usual jacket or dirty laundry pile shadows I normally saw. This shadow has more life to it. It was as tall as my bedroom ceiling and as black as pitch, the darkest black I had ever seen. The shadow made its way to the foot of my bed and reached out long ebony arm, pointing its long fingers at me and began to what I can only describe as gargle and scream at once. Yeah, I'm not about this. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty intense. Ugh. This. Oh, it's the angry natives. It's us angry natives. Mm-hmm. We we hold grudges. 
Yep. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The sound was gut-wrenching and left a feeling of fear and dread within me. I wanted to scream and cry out for help, but nothing would come out. The shadow then jumped from the foot of my bed to the center of my bed on my stomach and pointed its pointy finger directly into my face. The once gargled screaming then turned into a raspy voice. You have what is mine. Give it back or I will take you instead. Oh, shit. After what felt like forever, I finally got my arms to move and started swatting the creature away. It left into thin air with a screech and made itself disappear. I turned on my lamp and looked around my room in panic just to so happen to catch something on the floor. And it was the arrowhead. It had fell or had been knocked off the shelf I had set it on. Taking it as a sign, I picked it up and threw it out of my window into the backyard. (laughs) Just fucking chuck it. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't have any more problems after that. No more sleep paralysis, no more shadows, just nothing. Whatever that thing was, I disturbed its property and will not make the same mistake again. The end. So are we thinking lucid dreaming? No. Are we thinking it's that? I'm not thinking legit. You think it's, so you're thinking legit. I'm thinking this is sleep paralysis and this is. Oh, okay. And this is, I don't know if I'd say it's a demon, but like you said, us natives, Mm -hmm. you fuck with a native, especially if you're a white boy, Spencer, I don't know what you are, but if you picked up one of our arrowheads, Mm -hmm. whoo, they're coming after you. Like I said, even in, even in life right now, if Mark would, my husband would come up here and take my glass. Yeah, I'd nothing. Take him down. We do yes. that. Oh, Spencer. Spencer, that was crazy. <laughs> I am sorry yeah. this happened to you. But like you said, you learned your lesson. Do not pick up arrowheads. And if anybody yeah. else is listening. Did he just throw it for some <laughs> other sad asshole to lick it? Like he just threw it out the window. <laughs> like a kid's going to walk yeah. by. Don't place it where you back where you found it. Just chuck it out your window. <laughs> 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 um. Like, fuck the next person. Fuck the next person. <laughs> um, that, oh. yeah, no, that is absolutely insane. Thank you, Spencer, for that. Yeah, thank you for sending that That in. is crazy. It's, I mean, yeah. I will always tell anybody, if you find any Native American indigenous artifacts, please leave them where they are. Um, yes. If you picked it up and you have left and you cannot return it to where it was, I would suggest two things. Um, the first thing, which I think would be the best thing, is to look up the closest tribe to the area and see if you can reach out to them and return it to them, and they will know what to do with it. Or, if you're comfortable doing it, the second option would be if you cannot return the arrowhead to its space and you cannot find a local tribe to give the arrowhead to, or whatever artifact you find that you believe may be indigenous to the area, um, if you're comfortable with it, I would suggest sort of cleansing your space and um, sort of releasing it in a respectful way. Um, Like what I would do when I came upon, I didn't come upon an indigenous item, but when I came across an item that I believe didn't belong to me and I didn't want to throw it away and it felt disrespectful, I sort of had a little ceremony out by my fire pit and I said a few words and I was being very respectful and I sort of threw it into the fire and released its energy sort of into the universe, if that makes sense. But I get that that's not everybody's bag. Um, so those are my two. But you don't want demons like Spencer, so. <laughs> no, no, that's true. I don't I don't want demons like Spencer. But yeah. I think a lot of it is no. if it was an indigenous spirit trying to scare somebody out of taking their thing, mm-hmm. I think if somebody responded in a respectful way, hopefully, you know, that would clear the air you know sometimes they just need to be you know respected and acknowledged or maybe it was just a fucking demon that was like oh this is my perfect opportunity to fuck with spencer (laughs) you know right spencer he's just been sitting there he's like fuck this person he's been waiting for Mm -hmm. you spencer he's like i can't wait wait. i'm seeing these artifacts Mm -hmm. artifacts i'm gonna come into making up your words again (laughs) out of fix (laughs) It's my Minneapolis. I can't help myself. <laughs> well, thank you again, Spencer. I believe you were actually the yeah. first person to send uh, send in a story, so I really appreciate it. Ooh. Um, Yay, Spencer. Spencer. If you have anything else happen, hopefully it doesn't because you said everything's fine, but if it does, feel free to write us back and let us know. 
And make sure to send your tit pits. Send your tit pits. That's her. <laughs> Our way. <laughs> That was a great one. That was a great first one. Uh-huh. All right. Our second story. Uh, this woman would like to remain anonymous. So this will be from Jane Doe. Okay. Um, I've got one for y'all. Backstory. My now husband. And- Can I ask though before we start this? Because both of them start with y'all. And Nicole is turning very Alabama. Do they actually start with y'all? Both of them? They our do. first two? And these stories, most Ooh. of them are coming from... Uh, like a local haunted Alabama <sighs> group that I came in. That's where I got a lot of my responses. This yeah, makes sense. So there's no. y'all. And it's it's okay. funny that you mentioned makes that sense. because it's so second nature to me. It's just that's just what you know. It's just what we say. Mm-hmm. We don't even notice it. Uh, good catch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's from our anonymous Jane Doe. She says, "I have one for y'all. Don't ask me to put on a southern accent because I'm not going to do it. Unless you get a beer in me, then I might <laughs> do it." Okay. I have one for y'all. Yeah, if you want an accent read, <laughs> if you want Nicole to read a certain type of accent Send a tip <laughs> during your stories, make sure to put that in there. Yeah, if you'd like me to read this in any sort of accent, please, please notate that in the email. Yes. I can do uh, British. I can do French. Uh, I can do Southern. I can do Minnesotan. Um, and I will stop here and I will continue to read the story. <laughs> All right, I got one for y'all. <laughs> one of those four. <laughs> All right, I have one for y'all. Backstory. My now husband and I dated in high school, broke up, and he went into the military stationed in Washington State. I went to a university in Texas. We kept in contact and got back together after he proposed. He came to live with me in Texas, and it was 1990. Ancient, I know, LOL. <laughs> it's not that ancient. It's not a, we were around in 1990. Um, we were at the apartment and inside edition came on TV and they announced that the lingerie rapist in Houston had finally been arrested and showed a picture and then went to a commercial. My husband, we'll call him B shouted at me. That's Gary. He was in my unit. And I'm like, whatever he watched and they announced his name and sure as shit. It was him. He not only raped a bunch of women, but also stalked the Houston DA, district attorney. And they didn't know until they searched his house. Uh, My husband ran into the bedroom and got out pictures and showed them to me. And we still have them, but that's really not any good for a podcast. (laughs) We'll take them if you want to. (laughs) We love pictures. Yeah. Now I have to look it up. Lingerie rapist of where? In Houston. What's the location? In In Mm -hmm. Houston. So she says, later he went with an old friend uh, who happened to work at the Harris County Sheriff Department, and he kind of walked him around and showed him the jail, and he was there. Gary, the lingerie rapist, was there. Um, She said uh, she asked him about Gary, and the only thing he could think of was that he collected Playboy magazines, but would never open them and just kept them in the plastic thing that they were sold in and collected them. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty normal. Yeah. He's yeah, but that's about the only thing that her husband could recall about Gary, you know, as they were in the military. Yeah. Um, and yeah, she said that's her first one. She may have more. She's got to think about the second one because it's a little sensitive to ID her as she wants to remain anonymous. So sure. we might hear from her again, from Jane Doe. Um, she did link me to the Fox 26 Houston article on the lingerie rapist. So I will send that to you and I will link it in nice. our... Uh, social media for people to find but that is nuts jane doe that is crazy yes i wonder if it's a dude that if he was called a lingerie rapist because he was either a like would rape or take lingerie or had fantasy or if he was like a btk where he liked to dress up in lingerie when and do that stuff so we'll be interesting have to read and find out read and find out yeah. Yeah. I love, I mean, I want to say I love that story, but it's kind of weird to say a love story about a rapist <laughs> because we do not condone that. Yeah. Um, but I love the fact that. I think if people are here, they. Yeah, no. They, they, they know. know we're, yeah. We mean well. And I think it. They know. They're here. <laughs> they know. They get it. <laughs> they know what they got themselves into. And if you don't, we might not it be is. a podcast I for mean, you. We have the uh, <laughs> disclosure at the beginning of the episodes for a reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Don't it's a great a example okay. of how Don't we will dick. read listener stories that aren't always about ghost stories yeah. or sleep paralysis like Spencer or, you know, it's a variety. Um, we like to hear it all. And I loved that she sent that in. So that was yeah. great. Um, thank Perfect. you, Jane Thank Doe. you. Anonymous. If you decide to send anything else in, 
please um, let me know. We will read it. We can keep you anonymous if you want. You can even change locations. Um, yeah. It's totally Names. fine. Yep. Yep. We'll do either that. So thank you so much. That was great. Okay. And I request this one to be said in a French accent. <laughs> um, denied. Only our listeners can request that. <sighs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay our next story can i get like can i get like two seconds of french accent let's just get i just want to hear like say hi i'm nicole i want to hear it uh you no, do not get it. this uh <laughs> no <laughs> that's italian uh these stories are um <laughs> these stories are these people are remaining anonymous <laughs> that's french i get italian but then a little I middle eastern italian there, because like really like suave the finger like the really thing, the Italian finger, thing. like the hot Middle Eastern guys that work at like the Mall of America that spray with perfume, the really hot ones. They get have like this romantic like way. Love them. Look, I've never Love. been to France. I'm just gonna preface that. Yeah, I've never. It's been beautiful. To so because I have taken a whole four years of French classes back like 20 years ago, I think I know you what I'm talking you do, about. So but you never do. <laughs> I'm yeah. kind of an expert, but yeah. that was beautiful. Okay, right. our third and final story um, is my favorite because it's absolutely insane. Ooh. So buckle up. Um, she would like to remain anonymous as well. So we're going to, um, this is yeah. our, our Jane Doe number two sending in a story. Um, yeah. She is also a feather, a feather. <laughs> she's the feather. Um, she's a fellow Southerner as well. This is coming from Enterprise, mm-hmm. Alabama. Um, but again, she'd like to remain anonymous, but she's coming out of Enterprise. Um, all right, here we go. Buckle in. Can you hear these cars passing? Could you hear that car passing? God, this, this microphone. I cannot. I swear, it sounds like it's picking up everything. Okay, here we go. We live in a house built almost 100 years ago. We purchased around 20 years ago and did a lottery modeling. This led to many incidences of paranormal activity. Somewhere along the way, sinister things began happening. The most terrifying is hard to say because there were numerous things happening. Late night, I had been cleaning house and wanted a quick shower before going to bed. I put my foot on the side of the tub to shave my leg and the shower curtain was underneath my foot and I felt the curtain being jerked and I quickly put my foot down and tried to rationalize what happened. So again, I put my foot on the side of the tub and again, but much more forcefully, the curtain was clearly being yanked. I turned the water off, reached for my towel to hurry and get the hell out. I stepped out and wrapped my towel around me and what sounded like hooves began tapping on the floor just to my left. I was screaming my husband's name, but he wouldn't wake up. Then it was to my right and then began encircling me as if it was dancing all around me. I ran to our bedroom. And then my husband wakes. After telling him what just happened, he said, just lay down and try to calm down so it doesn't feed on your fear. The next occurrence was maybe a few nights later. My husband is normally a light sleeper and can always hear him breathing as he sleeps. This night was different. He would stop breathing and mumble incoherently. I nudged him and he stopped. The third time he did this, he stopped breathing. I could clearly hear his voice having a conversation with someone in our dining room. I was paralyzed with fear. I knew this was something mimicking his voice somehow, but also was affecting him physically. Um, Other events involved our dog at the time, and she only barked if someone was at the front door. She slept on our bedroom floor. She began waking us up at night, barking and going nuts at our bedroom wall. We could not figure out why she was doing this until years later. I was walking down our guest room hall and turned to go into the kitchen when something captured my eye in our bedroom. There was a thing that ran through our bedroom wall. I was simply stunned. After a few seconds, I ran into the bedroom, but it had already gone through the other wall. It appeared to be as if it was like a thin 5'9 man, but had a solid black stocking from head to toe. Oh, What? And this was like two years after the first occurrence? Just right? a couple years later, I think it said. A couple, couple years, years, yeah. Okay. Which they couldn't figure out why oh. the dog was barking at the wall. Yeah. Um, so it was solid black, no eyes, just all mm. black, 
not transparent and it didn't even look her way. Um, I will never forget the knees coming up and the elbows as it ran. Ew, don't like that. <laughs> Let me add shockingly. <laughs> Ew. I just am imagining like the knees and the elbows and it just like <laughs> just running super creepy. <laughs> Nicole just did like the like cartoon skeleton from home. <laughs> That's what I imagine. <laughs> Yeah. It's creepy. <laughs> like riding a horse. <laughs> um, she said, okay, let me add shockingly, this was a sunny day at two o'clock in the afternoon. And besides my husband, who's going to believe me, a sadness just swept over me as I sat down to get my bearings. Immediately, I knew what my dog was barking at. She had been seeing this the whole time. You can only imagine how ha- how happy I was when four days later, my husband saw the same thing. However, the one he saw was shorter and walking through the wall, not running. I knew something was wrong when he shouted for me and the hair on his arm stood straight up. There is an abandoned house next door to us, and we believe that the evil lives there. Although scary, the ghosts in our house weren't evil until the evil from next door crept in somehow. It's always affirming when others have haunting experiences in the house and we feel validated and less crazy. I could tell you so much more. We've been there about two decades and finally bought a not haunted house and don't like even going back to the old house. We've got some work to do there before putting it on the market to sell. If you need more material, we have enough to write a book. Good luck with the podcast. Wow. Love to listen when it's up and running. I want to hear all of it. I want to hear. I want you to write a book and send it our way. Just, you know, just a quick book. Yes. Write that down. Please. Jane Doe number two. You know who I'm yeah, you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking to you, Jane Doe. Yeah. Please send us in this more. Um I wanna know why they think that house next door is evil. I know. And why I wonder I wanna know that. Like what's going on next door? Yeah. Too? Why is that Yeah, evil? we should just have her on the podcast. We could we could yeah. um Absolutely. distort her voice like in those <laughs> interviews <gasps> where they sound like this and it's all different distort. <laughs> Like, why am I gonna? I'm gonna sound like. Hold on, what should I do? (laughs) Be like, boy. That's it. Boy, tell you about (laughs) my ghost story. Yes, we can do that. If you want to come on, Um, but no, I really want. We need more. Like this was so good. Like it gave it. It gave me goosebumps when I was reading it. Some just bad energy or something that was left over. I don't know. I want to hear about why you think it's from the neighbor's house. Yeah, so. I was going to say, I kind of want to know the history of the this house, is. but maybe we need to know the history of the neighbor's house, the not house next door. I don't know. I mean, so send it over. I just, this is just, it's crazy. I mean, she says she lives in a house that's almost 100 years old, which is a lot of houses in the South. I mean, it's ours, a history. yeah, a lot of history. ours is over 100 years old. Um, I'm sure more than one person has died here, but. Thankfully, we have no hauntings, mm-hmm. knock on wood. Um, yeah. And I'm sure she mentioned that she was doing a lot of remodeling, and that will always, if there's mm-hmm. ever been activity, that's going to kick it up a lot if you're remodeling. I wonder why that is. I wonder why that's like a common recurrence for people that you hear about when people start getting hauntings or maybe at a house where they weren't feeling as much, and then they start you know, kind of just knocking down walls or doing something and then all of a sudden... Yeah, I feel like there's the there's probably too. two different... I mean, I feel like if it's a residual haunting where it's just energy sort of repeating itself and you're n- renovating this property, it, you know, it's different. The energy is going through different different areas maybe. Um, maybe that's one. And maybe it's just because like, hey, this was an old lady's house that lived here and she does not want you knocking down this wall that was her favorite wall. Her shit, yeah. yeah. I have a favorite wall. <laughs> Don't knock down my favorite wall. Um, but yeah, I mean, so much stuff was happening in this house, and the shower yeah. with the with the tugging. Oh no! Yeah. I, I, you're so vulnerable in the shower too. I mean, you're naked, and somebody's tugging. Yeah. Like no, ah, oh, mm-mm. That's why I connected my that one short like Harvey the Hammer thing because I'm like it was always because the basement. It's like, but yeah, you feel like, it's like, are you fucking with me just because I'm in the bathroom? Because that's like when I do feel like you're just like, 
If I have to say the scariest place in your house, it's, it's always your bathroom, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, and they say that spirit, spirits are connected and get energy from like water. So that's why I hear like mm-hmm. a lot of things happen in bathrooms because of the amount of water that goes, you know, in and out. But well, who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's crazy. And the fact that their dog was barking so often, it took them years to figure out why. Like, why is this dog barking at the wall? Yeah. And then seeing that, and then she's like, oh, it was so relieved i was so happy imagine how happy i was when when my husband yeah. saw it <laughs> you're like that's nice that her she it's always nice to have someone being able to confirm so you don't feel crazy yeah yeah so you i get love the validation. that i know it's probably scary yeah 100 percent. because it's never fun when you're like i saw this or like am i by saying this out loud yes uh, do i sound like a crazy person yeah and it's nice to have like someone else mm-hmm. to tell you like nope you're not crazy. Yep. There's something going on. Totally. So. I, I feel, yeah. I mean, I'm so glad they got into another house and they're they're living in, in another house. But the fact that they still have to go back there to, you know, yeah. to do some work, like, ugh, I feel bad for them. They still deal it. Well, they said they, two decades, right? They said they have it for two decades. They've been there for two so, decades. That's a long time to stay in, like, a house that has so much activity. So I give them props. It is. But like they said, it was good. She said she could write a book. I don't know if the neighbors are just always douches, though. Is that why? <laughs> well, she said it's an abandoned house next door. So, like, has oh. it been aban- it has it been abandoned this entire two decades, too? Like, yeah, I want to know. Um, but I'm so glad that she has gotten into another house. Um, but if... Yeah. <laughs> this brings up an interesting topic, because I've always thought, like... <laughs> Can you, should you disclose something like that when you're selling? It's like a, it's like a, is it a moral obligation? Would you tell somebody this house is haunted I, <laughs> if you're trying to sell it? I see it this way. I think there's like laws and I think it might go by state by state. I could be completely wrong because I watch a lot of house things. But I think if like there's a murder or something in your house, they have to tell you legally. Yeah, it's um, state by state. In some states. Mm-hmm. But I think it's so – there's so many people, like, for example, Nicole's husband, where you can be like, here's so much proof of this happening, and he'll still be like, oh, you're crazy, you're making – you know, you're making it up and stuff like that. Do you want to lose a potential buyer by you being like – Yeah. This is happening. They're like, this is a crazy bitch. Or are they going to be like – no, or are they going to be like me where I'd be like, that's cool. I want to move there. It's – yeah. You don't know. It's tough. It's tough. I mean, maybe you mm-hmm. could market it to people – in our haunted group, maybe yeah. somebody wants to buy a haunted house. There's paranormal researchers that might. You never know. Um, but what or if it were me, leans? what I would do, um, especially if you have to go back there to do some renovations and you're worried about it. Um, I don't know, Jane Doe number two, if you have taken any precautions or if you've done anything to try to protect yourself in your space. If you know anything about it, maybe you don't even know where to start. Um But I would do that. I would start trying to cleanse the space. Um, Cleanse your own house. Um, You can use sage. I know a lot of people say that only indigenous people should use sage, but I don't really believe that. I think anybody can use sage to cleanse their space. But I do highly recommend if you're going to use sage, if you're going to burn it, to purchase it from an indigenous company or an individual. Don't just go buy it at down in the valley. Which is a Minnesota company. Nobody knows what that is. But, you know, don't just buy it willy-nilly off the internet. You know, make sure you're, you know, getting it from a somebody that's cultivating it from an indigenous farmer. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you could start with that. Smudging, cleaning your space with sage. Um, if you are a religious person, you can say your prayers, whatever, whatever you do to cleanse your space. Um, put salt. Do you salt salt around your house? If it's especially if you think it's the house that's next door, fuck. Put salt all around the house. Keep that shit out. Keep it out. And for all my always sunny fans, you'll understand. Just salt in it. So <laughs> salt in the snail. <laughs> they just throw salt in her. Pretend it like for my always sunny's fans that your next door neighbor's house or the snail, <laughs> and make sure to salt them good. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean it's true. I highly recommend. Um, trying to cleanse your space and setting your intentions and also speaking to the spirits in your house, because it sounds like you have 
some unrelated ghosts in your house that are not part of the evil that's coming in from next door, as you had mentioned. So if there are spirits in the house that you do not mind and you are cohabiting the space harmoniously before that evil, you can also mention that and say just like good can stay, bad can go. You're not welcome. If you're good, we can, you know, live harmoniously. Sometimes you just have to, you just have to talk and set your intentions. Mm -hmm. You can't always ignore it. I mean, her husband was right in the fact that you don't want to feed it fear because it's just going to get worse. Mm -hmm. But you also have to acknowledge it because they're going to try to get your attention. Um, But that's what... Would your husband, if you came in and was like, I'm hearing this all around me, he wouldn't be like, don't feed it. (laughs) My husband would like, ran. her husband would be like, nah, go to sleep. Yeah. Whatever. Your husband would run Other out of the house husband, in his house shoes. He would run. I'd be halfway through that thing and he would be gone and never step foot in his <laughs> He'd house be down the road <laughs> barefoot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he couldn't even listen to the story. <laughs> no. Um, Absolutely not. But yeah, um, Jane Doe, thank you so much for sending it in. I hope that um, I hope that selling goes well. If you need help, if you need more resources, um, to cleanse your space, you know, you can reach back out and we can help connect you with some more information. Um, you can even get some help in our ghost group, our hauntings of Alabama. There are paranormal researchers that can come out and assist and they'll do it for free a lot of the time. Um, so there is help available. Don't feel like you're alone. So many people go through this and you're not crazy. Um, and yeah, so thank you. Feel free. If you want to send us, thank you. Send us more your book that you that you could write. We would love to hear more. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. So For sure. thank you. All right, weirdos. So initially we were going to end the episode right here, um, but we actually got a couple more listener stories in between the time we recorded this and the time we were going to release it. So I'm going to read just a couple more blips for you, um, and we're going to chit chat just a little bit more because let's be honest, you guys like longer episodes, and this was going to be a short one. But now we're going to make it long because you love it, right? Of course, because, like, it was only 45 minutes, and how dare we, (laughs) right? How dare we? How dare we? They were going to be like, what the fuck? I know. I mean, and for a Halloween episode. I know. I mean, come on. I mean, obviously not technically Halloween, but this will be our pre-Halloween episode. It's the episode that comes out before Halloween. So, you know. Yes. We'll give you a little extra. This is actually as crazy as it is one of our first recordings. The beginning of it is one of our first recordings. We were ready for fucking Halloween. That's when you know, like, we are Halloween gals. We were like, (laughs) we didn't even have the podcast ready, but we're like, we have our Halloween episodes. We got the booze. We got some cool stories. We were ready for it. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So whatever you just listened to, we recorded maybe in September. I know. (laughs) Something like that. (laughs) Yeah. It was. It had to be September. We were prepared. So, so yeah. So if you notice a difference in quality between what you listen to and what you're hearing now, that's why. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm too lazy to go and gloss it over. Um, so stop, yeah. Nicole. You're the you guys best know that by now. editor ever. Stop it. You are an amazing uh, editor. Okay, Things are. Right, it's amazing. Whatever, 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 whatever. Do you know how like we every that's time we give each other a compliment, we growl at each other? Have you noticed that? <laughs> <laughs> compliment compliment <laughs> we're gonna be a grumpy old bitches sitting on a porch one day giving each other compliments and just growling at each other <laughs> that's true I mean we kind of already are, we are. <laughs> <laughs> what are you clanking over there you're making editing so much harder for me <laughs> you know clank, why clank, because clank. so metal straws Nicole <laughs> <laughs> Nicole knows this about me like I'm really crazy about ice and I'm really crazy about having things cold so I like to drink everything in copper cups and everything with metal straws and yes I'm vegan so I care about the environment but it literally is because everything stays super cold and delicious so if you're clink 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 that's because well guess what I have my stainless steel ghosty girls gone weird tumbler here Ooh. but guess what listen listen to this did you hear that metal clanging? No. Because I drink with care. Have you noticed? Sh- this bitch is always doing plugs. She's always doing plugs. I'm a plugs. plugger. Can you help it? I mean, I can't help it. I, She's we, always uh, we doing have great merch. Plugs. It's fun. 
I like it. She is. I like it. Also, if anybody didn't see it, uh, I don't even know if you saw it. Did you see the leggings that I <laughs> that I made for the store? Nicole just makes most beautiful stuff, and then I get it. <laughs> I have not seen them yet. I'm very excited for it. Oh, my God. So there are these white, um, like, jogger leggings, um, which, by the way, my fat mm-hmm. ass can't even fit into. They're like XLs, but they don't come in plus size because I have a big ass. So I made them for all the other skinny bitches out there that I love. But they say on the oh, back. Oh, don't make just – don't – I'm very disappointed. Don't do it, but I will – I'll listen to what you say. No, that wasn't a that wasn't a hate on myself. I love my big ass. It's just a fact. <laughs> you have a beautiful ass. No, wh- we need like plus sizes. I know we're working on it. I mean, it's it's all up to the okay. production and printing company that we're gonna have to bug them about plus sizes. F- fuck you, production company. Yeah, but go on. I want these leggings. So on the back it says, mm-hmm. "I heart sass ass quatch." With the ass and big Ooh. letters. The ass, ass watch. I love them. Nice. <laughs> so somebody please buy them and send me a picture of your butt. Yes. I'm just looking for butt pics. We want our under pit tits pics. So let's pit, get some pit, ass pics pit, in there. Pit, tit pit ticks? Yeah. I can't even say it. That's a mouthful. <laughs> tit pits. <laughs> pics. All right. Let's get into these other stories. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Okay. So... Let's start again. This email was a response to our Girls Gone Paranormal episode. So if you remember back in that episode, um, the night that I had my medium reading with Ryan, I was hearing all this clicking and the tapping on the windows. And I thought maybe mm-hmm. there's a rat in the wall. And it did sound like it at first. Da, 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 da. Everybody's listening to that episode. You guys know what I'm talking about. So I got an That may be our top episode. It was Yeah, it's, it's gotten, That's it's our gotten top a lot one. of hits. Yeah. A lot of people say it's their favorite. Yep. Um, so we had Danielle reach out to us, um, but she's not a Denny. She's a Danny. Mm-hmm. She says, hi, girls. I'm Danny, and I am also weird. True crime is my life. And whichever one of you said that your favorite books are stiff and smoke gets in your eyes, two of my favorites as well. That was me, girl. That was my favorite books. They're good. Yeah. Um, the point of getting in touch with y'all is Nicole, I believe, had an experience with what she thought was a rat. I've been hearing a rat for months, rustling, scuttling, etc. When I heard your story, I spoke to the spirit slash ghost and I asked it to stop and voila, it stopped. Like after months, it stopped. She just asked it. Wow. She says, in short, thank you for validating me in this, that it's a real thing and I was not just in the midst of a sudden psychosis. <laughs> Y'all are badass. Keep on bringing the weirdness. Danny. It's so sweet. Thank you, Danny. Thank and you, I love Danny. it, Danielle. I am also, Denny is Danielle. That's my Christian name. <laughs> my Christian government name. My Christian government. So that's God awesome. Name. I call my, go- I get my Christian government name. <laughs> Thank you, Danielle. It's awesome. I, I do believe that. I 100%. I've had that same experience where if you just, a white, there is a house when I first moved to Fergus that um, a friend that I, moved with Becky, one of my besties, besties besides Nicole, moved into and we had I had like an experience right away and I r- right away just said, hey, leave, you know, like go. Mm-hmm. And they did. You know, that's that's all you really had to do with a lot of these spirits. So that's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. And when you think about the animals, uh, it's like when people say like, oh, I saw a cardinal and people think that cardinals represent, you know, their loved ones. And mm-hmm. yeah, apparently they, they have some some power over over other life forms and can send you some messages. So you were not going into psychosis um, and I'm glad we could help and validate you. So thank you for letting us know. It was nice of you. (laughs) Thank you, Danny. Yes. Thank you, Danny. Okay. The only other story that I'm going to read tonight, I have another one, but we're going to save it for another time. Um, So this one is from one of my best friends, Angie. And she sent us a message. Oh, Angie. Angie. I love Angie. Hi, Angie. We love you. Angie. Hi, Angie. Hi, Angie. You're the cutest. Yes. I think she's going to try to go on our New Orleans girls trip with us. So. Woohoo. That's whole Yeah, we're having a girls trip to New Orleans. Yeah. We're going to. Yeah, we're going to. We got to plan that. We're going to get New Orleans yep. episode V2. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> All right. So Angie says, hi, ladies. Here you go. Until recently, I didn't realize black-eyed kids were a thing. I was chatting with a friend about supernatural experiences, and she brought this topic up. 
I was shocked it was a thing and it completely validated what I saw all these years and it creeps me the fuck out. Good luck on your podcast. Can't wait to tune in. And here's her story. She says, Mm -hmm. I was about 10 or 11 years old. I was running errands with my dad when he stopped at Tom Thumb to buy some cigarettes and lotto tickets. Oh, my God. Do you remember Tom Thumb? (gasps) Did they have Tom Thumbs and other students? Uh, Little corner store Tom Thumb. I don't know. I know in my Minneapolis, my Northeast Minneapolis, yeah, that was like, oh, I'm picking up dinner for the family. And I would be like five and like carrying a whole bunch of fried chicken from like Tom Thumb two blocks down. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it was like yeah this big thing i love tom thumb <laughs> so yeah typical typical 90s situation here uh stopped mm-hmm. at tom thumb to buy some cigs and some lotto tickets <laughs> i decided to wait in the car while he got his things as i sat there i looked over at the car park next to us and that's when i noticed two kids staring blankly at me with their heads perfectly framed in the window they looked to be around the same age as me so about 10 or 11 their skin was pale And they had hoods on, as if they were wearing a hooded sweatshirt. When I made eye contact with them, I noticed their eyes were very large and completely black. It looked like they had eight balls for eyes. I was completely stunned. I remember thinking, what is wrong with them? Do they need help? (laughs) I had never seen anyone or anything like it before. A few minutes had passed, and we didn't break eye contact. Nobody moved. I was full of curiosity because they looked like kids, but they didn't at the same time. Uh, They had this very strange and dark energy about them. My dad finally came back to the car, and he didn't notice them because his hands were full of lotto tickets. He buckled off, and we drove away. (laughs) As we were leaving the parking lot, I turned around, and I could still see them staring at me from the rearview window. I just sat there silently in shock about what I just saw. The end. Black-eyed kids. My uh, number one quote, fucking creepy kids. Fucking creepy-ass kids. (laughs) Yes. Why are fucking kids so fucking creepy? Well, that's the question. Are these kids? What the fuck are they? Eight balls for eyes? All kids are creepy. That's freaky <laughs> as fuck. That's a nice like creepy it. pasta shit. Um, yeah. I don't like it, Angie. Nope. We've had another call for more stories about like topic episodes, and I remember getting a couple mm-hmm. requests for Black Eyed Kids episodes, so I'm going to have to gather some more of those because they are creepy. Um, so if you guys have yeah. any more to add to Angie's Black Eyed Kids, please send them in because, whoo, that's terrifying. Please, please do. And it literally is just, it is written out, girls gone weird email at gmail.com. So yes. make sure to put that email at the end. Yes. Girls gone weird email, email at gmail.com. Yes. I fear that we lose uh, some listener stories and some emails to, to a wrong email address. So please get the email address right or just slip it into our dms on social media because we check those often too yep we're on facebook and instagram girls gone weird so please if for some reason you can send an email or send it that we can send both just to be sure and then Mm -hmm. when this is coming out there's only a few days so october 31st is the end of our fancy fancy super fancy giveaway that we're having so spooky make sure giveaway. listener spooky giveaway so listen to the first three episodes get this you have to make sure you get the spooky word and you can get, get more code word in. get that code word in which we've i've seen even though i don't read all that stuff that's nicole's thing um i'm seeing they're coming in now and i'm very excited and then um mm-hmm. go from there you can like gain it a whole bunch of ways like however you promote us we will give you points <laughs> yeah yeah, you'll get you'll get entries. And yeah, yeah, it's coming up here. I mean, it I just packed up the stuff today mm-hmm. in a shipping box. Super excited Woo! to send it to whoever's getting it. And I keep trying to find things like what else can I shove in for these people? What else can I shove in? I want to give people more things. I think I'm going to bottle up some moon water into some vials and maybe slip some moon Ooh. water into there. We have a, a full moon. Um that was your beautiful skin that you put this moon water, uh-huh. right? Nicole has the most beautiful face and beautiful skin. <laughs> ah. And if that is from moon water, you will love this. It's Yeah. 100%. I do. I, I literally will wash my face with it every night. In fact, I just ordered one of those really nice continuous spray bottles where you just press the button once and it goes mm-hmm. mists on you. And I'm going to fill mm-hmm. it with my moon water so I just mist myself throughout the day. Love it. This is, like, the best prize. I can't even think, like, personally, I can't think of a better prize from anybody ever. 
than this one. <laughs> I know. It's good. It's good. I'm trying. I, pa- I packed up ghosty. I packed up little little glass ghosty. And I was so sad to take it off my desk. I was like, <laughs> you're going to your new home soon. <laughs> so if it gets ghosty, make sure to treat yeah. ghosty right. Treat him right. They deserve right. it. They, them, whatever you choose. Yeah. You can put the gender um, in there. Yeah. All righty. So I was lucky this weekend to go with a few friends to Grand Marais, which is like the most beautiful place in Minnesota. If you ever come to Minnesota, that's where you fucking go. Gorgeous. <laughs> like, that's where you go. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. It's sensational. And we were playing a lot of games, a lot of mental mind games, because a few of the people were like psychologists and like stuff like that. So... So there was this one game that I was really attracted to and I was like, oh my God, I need to have Nicole's answer for this. <laughs> I like need to have Nicole's answer for this. A psychological so game. I will, I'm scared. I, it's, you're going to love this. Okay. And I will say mine first so that you know, kind of, and you can think about what yours would be. Okay. Right? Okay. So it's like, if there is a hell, if like hell on earth was like you had to repeat the same one day over and over and over again, what would that look like? Like if there was a hell that existed and you had to repeat the same day, what would that look like? So I'm going to start with mine. Okay. What's yours? And you can think of yours. Okay. All right. Ready? So Mm -hmm. this is my, if I had to repeat a day fucking over and over and over again. And I literally want to hear everyone else's because when we started talking about this, I love the responses that I got. Yeah. So my worst day, I wake up, I get abruptly waked up, like fucking loud alarm, right? Mm -hmm. The worst, loud alarm. Yep. It's cold outside, but it's not just cold, it's slushy. It's like a Minnesota fucking dark, slushy day. It's it's like raining outside, but it's not good rain. The snow is cold, slushy rain. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what happens when I'm walking to my car? Mm. That. That's a shitty car. Fucking wet socks. Ew. You know those socks are wet. Mm-hmm. You know the bottom of your pants are wet, and they're going to be wet all day. Oh, yeah, and the wetness creeps right? up your your calves. Mm-hmm. Mm, the worst. Driving to work. Shitty car. The car smells. Because you know you can't have any joy. You know what my job is, Nicole? Hmm. You know what my job is? What? Child daycare. Child yeah. daycare. <laughs> all day. <laughs> Children. Screaming. Oh. Just like a good 12 hours of shitty fucking kids. Anyone who listens to this podcast knows, like, I'm not joyful of children. But, like, I'm talking about, like, shitty kids. I don't get a lunch. (laughs) They're loud. I'm tired. All right, so I'm walking out of work, right? In my mind, I'm like, oh, I'm going to have a, I'm going to go home. I'm going to relax. I'm going to watch a good show. You know what happens on the way out? Mm. Old man stops me. Old man stops me. (laughs) And doesn't let me go. Just fucking boring stories. <laughs> Just talks and talks and talks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I'm tired. The old man stops me. I get home, right? I'm like, yeah. I'm hungry. I just want to relax because of these. I need to get my head rewind. You know what I have to eat for dinner? Mm. Fucking apples and like a banana. <laughs> I fucking hate like just... <laughs> I hate just like just like and the thing is like I'm not a sweet person but not only that like if there's gonna be apples it has to be like an apple crisp it has to be like an apple pie if there's bananas <laughs> it has to be like a banana pie I fucking hate just like plain you need apples added sugar. and bananas mm-hmm. added sugar. Uh, I don't like sugar I don't even like sugar but if I have to eat that like that's my meal and you know yeah. what I have on the TV what? fucking basic cable Basic cable. Mm. <laughs> like oh, no. hotel cable. Ooh. Like, yep. You know, like, and the show I'd probably want to watch is like already halfway, already done when yeah. I get in there. Uh-huh. And they take all the good parts out. And there's like so much commercials about like knife sales. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just like QVC knife sales. Uh huh. Yep. Over and over. <laughs> Yep. Over every single like ten minutes, it's like oh we're to play Con Air and I get Con Air because that's one of my favorite movies on cable. Yeah, it's like Con Air, Nicolas Cage. You're like oh my god, 
it's so good. And then it's like, oh, over and over again, it's like knife sales, QVC, and then it's like, oh, mm-hmm. call this like Dateline. Like, oh, mm-hmm. big titties in your face. But you know it's not big titties in your face. <laughs> <laughs> You know it's not that good. No. Mm-mm. And then, yeah, and then just like shitty sleep. There's just really shitty sleep. I finally go to bed and I probably know what I sleep on. I sleep on like, it's not a bed. It's like, what are those pull-up beds, but they're not a bed? A futon. A futon. Like a fucking hard, yeah, like a fucking hard futon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, and I'm going to wake up the next day and go through the same exact thing. So that is my day if I had a hell. That I had to repeat over and over again. So, Nicole, starting from the beginning, and I want to hear everyone else's. (laughs) I've thought about this. What is your fucking, like, if there was a hell and it was that you had to repeat the same day over again. Let's hear it. Okay. Let's see. We're going to start with similarly shitty sleep. Mm -hmm. No sleep. Your alarm is going off very, very loud Mm -hmm. or a child is screaming in your face or people are just needing something from you immediately. And I'm waking up on a very uncomfortable surface, like you said, Uh, maybe even like waking up from camping. I hate camping. Oh, fuck camping. Yeah. Yeah. Like waking up on the ground. There's like a stick under the under the tent that's Mm -hmm. like been poking you all night. Yep. I don't mind waking up to, like, the birds and the sun, but, like, everything else is shit. Mm -hmm. Don't love it at all. Um, And then I wake up and I realize, like, oh, God, I have my period and I don't have anything to take care of it. And I've got cramps and I'm fucking crabby and all I want is, like, chocolate cake and we've got nothing. We've got beans. We've got canned vegetables in the cabinets. It's not It's not payday. We have no food. We have no good mm-hmm. food. There's some saltines, maybe, um, and no water. There's no water to yeah, be seen. Yeah, you're so anywhere. dehydrated. You just want water. You just want water. I just want water. Yeah. There maybe maybe there's some pop. Maybe there's beer. I don't want that shit. I need some fucking water, and it's ta- I don't want the tap water. I need a bottle of water. I need some fucking spring water. The only socks I have have holes in the toes, so you can feel that, like, one cold piece of skin on your toe touching the floor. And then you realize that it's, like, the beginning of your week. It's, like, Monday morning, and you know you have to work the rest of the week, if not, like, doubles. Just just constant. Just constant. So, like, maybe I don't even actually go to work, but it's just the knowing. Yeah. The knowing that it's Monday. You know yep. what I mean? That knowledge. That, yep. like... The I knowledge have I have to, and I have to do it. And it's a job that sucks. It's just, mm-hmm. so, it's soul sucking. What is your soul um, sucking job? Probably what I'm doing now. <laughs> <laughs> My child's um, carry like, what no. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, soul sucking job. Honestly, customer service fucking sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, dealing with people. Okay. So like if I had to go back to one of my old jobs, like being a hostess at Hula Hands and, and if I, if like, all day, people were asking, can I have that booth? Can I have that booth? Oh, I want a booth. Hey, can I have that booth? I want a booth. Everybody's asking for a booth. We don't have any fucking booths. Mm-hmm. We just have tables, and you're going to have to fucking sit there. And then when it's time to close, pe- parties are coming in. It's eight minutes to close, and there's a party at 20 that come in. Oh. And you're not technically closed yet, so they, they got to yeah, do it. seat them. Mm-hmm. You got to fucking do it. And then, and then they tip like shit because, of course, they do. And they expect everything from you. They're being messy. They're dropping all the shit on the floor. Um, terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, I get, food is a big thing. Any Anytime I would eat during the day, uh, nobody has what I want or they're getting my order wrong. Anytime I order something and it's just not the way I ordered it, even if it's still probably going to be good, disappointed. Like what a waste! That's what I, I this I wanted my food this way. <laughs> yeah, giving it to me that way. <laughs> That's the sure way to piss me off. Yeah, sure way to piss me off. And mine is apple and bananas. Um, Just plain fucking apples and bananas. I get apple it. Apple and bananas. 
<laughs> which actually reminds me of a quick, uh, quick side note, funny story. When I was pregnant, um, you know, when you're pregnant, your emotions are all over the place and you're like, you get upset over the stupidest things. The stupidest thing I got upset about when I was pregnant was we had ordered Chinese food for takeout. And in the elevator coming back from work with my, with our Chinese takeout, I realized that they gave us extra food, which normally would be a celebration. But I started bawling because what was I going to do with all this extra food? I couldn't eat it. I wasn't going to eat it. I didn't order it. And I started bawling because I got extra Chinese food. I might food. have told you, but I don't know if I have. You want to hear the funniest thing I ever balled up by being pregnant? Mark was just like, what the fuck's what? happening? So we were watching The Voice because The Voice was my jam at the time. And Shania Twain was like the guest judge. So they usually have like a guest judge that comes in, like a musician that's a guest judge. And Shania Twain came in. And yeah. everyone was so excited, and I started crying because I was so happy that everyone got to see Sunaya Twain. I was <laughs> like, this is so amazing. <laughs> I was, like, bawling. <laughs> like, every time someone would walk in, why am I not I'm there just, right like, now? Their dreams are coming true. Shania Twain <laughs> is there. <laughs> Fucking Janiah Train is a fucking boss, yeah. so I don't give a shit about what anyone says, but I was bawling. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, relive that <laughs> yeah, over right? and over. All right, um, so. You, I don't get to see Shania Twain. I don't Twain. get to see Shania Twain. I was crying about it. That was amazing. All right, so. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> so. So you're, so you had this night fucking people of 20 so it's the end of the night and if you're end of your night at your job that table of 20 came in tip shitty my shift is finally over and it's time to go home and similarly to you you have a shitty car and it's winter and it's snowing and it's slushy and no it's not slushy it's a fucking ice Ooh. rink so it's a heart attack trying to get home because you're driving and like everybody's sliding into each other. But you have to get home. This happened to me, if you can tell. Happens all <laughs> this Minnesota. the worst. I was bawling the entire drive home. Oh, my God. Don't move to Minnesota. Uh, in the winter. <laughs> uh, trying to get home. It's like a three-hour affair to get to get 12 miles down the road because everything's an ice rink. Finally get home. My power's out. I can't do anything. I can't watch Ooh. anything. I can't enjoy any of my shit. My food has gone bad. It went, it spoiled because the power went out. Even though you live in Minnesota, so it's like cold and it would keep your food cold anyway. Just never mind. This is it's, fake. It's fake hell. <laughs> Don't worry about the logistics. Lucifer himself <laughs> had picked this for you. This is fake hell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, basically just um, going to bed and you just can't get comfortable, which is my every night these days as well. Your back hurts. Nothing, nothing's working. You're too hot. Uh, it, it, yeah. I mean, like, part of me wants to go realistic, but it's too depressing because I'm like, no, a lot of mine is realistic. I'm trying to. I'm thinking of like, honestly, the worst day of my life was the day that Ryan died. So, like, having to relive that over and over, I would not want to do that. Like, I was at work and I couldn't leave, and I learned that that happened, and it was just like. You don't want to be at work when you learn that your best friend died? No, they didn't let you leave at all? Or did you not tell uh, them? I mean, they did. It was towards the end of the day. I mean, I honestly just, like, I, I fuck, like, I, f I said, like, fuck everybody. Like, I locked myself in the bathroom at the front desk and was just, like, on the floor. Yeah. Like, just a, a mess and told the other girl to, like, call for my husband. Whatever. Bring him up here. Anyway, this is a depressing story. But would not want to do that again over and over, having to um, know that somebody you love just died over and over and over again. That would fucking – that would suck. Yeah. That would suck. So, yeah, I don't know. I want to hear other people's because mine I feel like is lame that people are like, this is this is no, somebody's every day and it's your worst hell. that's the whole <laughs> point. But that's the whole point of like if – what would your hell be? And like so there's mm -hmm. a lot of me – it's mediocre. Like, obviously, I can say, like, the day my grandma died over and over again or the day this dog that I love died over and over mm -hmm. again. Or, like, there's certain things, but, like, a mediocre day that you have to yeah. live over and over, over again and over. is a hell. Okay, so this is no comparison to Ryan. But this is what kind of pisses mm -hmm. me off about the story I just hold. So did you tell anyone when Ryan, when Ryan passed away, did you tell anyone at your job? 
of what happened or did you kind of keep that to yourself? Um, eventually I did because I needed to take like a week off of work because he was like my brother. So I like called – I was like, you're giving yeah. me bereavement and I'm not coming in. <laughs> Plus like Kayla, you know, had to fly in from, from Arizona and she was staying with us. It was like a whole – it was a whole debacle, you know. Yeah, for sure. So I think – and my husband and I worked together. So he went into work when I was staying at home, you know, grieving. So I think word got around and he was able to confirm and, you know, people found out. And they were a little – pe- people were sensitive to me when I got back. So Well, that's nice. At least they did that. You want to hear something super insane by the super insane chick. Wish you will love, Nicole. Yes. But it's not as sad as that. But it is sad in a situation, but not as sad as that. So when Michael Jackson died, (laughs) just going super opposite, I like sat there and it was like a big deal to me as a super, super nerd of Michael Jackson, which Nicole knows. I am a huge Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson fan. His music. I never let change my opinion, but yeah, um, yeah, I was huge. And like, I literally sat at my desk. It's the only celebrity I've experienced like so far. I don't yeah. know who would be the celebrity. I think it would be probably Conan O'Brien because Conan O'Brien's my boy. Probably Jack yeah. Black. Jack Black, yeah. Conan O'Brien. Oh, like in that yeah. level of like, because I don't really usually celebrate celebrities, but the few that would would be those two that yeah, are still alive. But Michael you. Jackson. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, Conan O'Brien, Jack Black, which I know Jack Black would affect you, too, 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, when Michael Jackson died, my boss, like, came up to me before, like, even seeing my emotion. I was like, Daniel, you should take the day off. <laughs> <laughs> and I, like, literally, like, they kept playing, like, not even, like, new Michael Jack, Not new, because new Michael Jackson's not new Michael Jackson, but, like, young Michael Jackson, like, Jackson 5, Michael Jackson, Jackson all the way. I was driving home and it was like, A, B, C, S, E, Z, S. I was like, he was so innocent. It was like 40 minutes. Blubbering. It was like 40 minutes of me driving home like a fucking idiot. Just. And then it would be like, what's the, oh my God, the sound that kept getting me at the wrist. Oh my God. This kept hitting me up just like, man in the mirror. Uh, uh. And I was like, just <laughs> fucking losing my mind or something just stupid. So I, so when you were talking about Ryan, I was like, oh, my God, I feel like everyone treated me good just over fucking Michael Jackson. <laughs> what? Well, everyone treated it I, like he was like I was re- related to him. Like I'm or related that, to Michael sure. Jackson. They're like, how are you? They treated me like, oh my god, Daniel. Yeah, how are you doing? You know, Daniel? that's how when um when Chester Bennington died, I had multiple mm-hmm. people like from high school reach out and they're like, are you doing okay? Because he was like, he was he was my beau. He was my first husband. Yeah. Um, completely in love with him. Um, he'll always be my first husband, <laughs> even though I stopped listening to Linkin Park a long time ago. But people, yeah. they remember. They were like, "How you doing?" Yeah. Like that was big news for you that he's gone. Um, that's funny. I probably was not there to console you for Michael Jackson because I was busy consoling my ex boyfriend at the time. Because that was the oh. only time I ever saw him cry in our entire like seven or eight years together. I only saw him cry when Michael Jackson <laughs> died. He was a fucking mess. I did too. I was you both balling. <laughs> me and, is it Sean? Was it me and it Sean? It was Sean. It was Sean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just Sean hated me, but he should have known <laughs> that he would have had a connection over here, Sean, if you listen to this. You guys could have been I each was other's shoulders. Like, <laughs> we would have because like my boss really came up to me immediately and was just like because it was kind of around the time that Michael Jackson was playing his last tour. And I, like, went online yeah. and I was mm-hmm. pl- I'm like, I don't care how much fucking money this is. Like, I was like, this is happening. And then, like, the website crashed within, like, 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he was. Mm-hmm. And then he diddles kids. He loves to diddle the kids. He does. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me That sad. might be something fucking- to add to your, like, your, your monotonous, horrible day over and over. Just, like, learning that he's a kid diddler over and over. Learning that okay. Michael Jackson. Because, you yeah. know what? Like, I'm very much like a um 
I always support victims. I usually believe victims. And it wasn't mm-hmm. I didn't believe Michael's victims. It was like, oh, they're kind of close. You know, it's less amazing than when, if you've never seen it, what is it, Neverland? Something Neverland? There's a documentary. Everyone should watch it. It's amazing. Of two children who, like, even, like, fought when they got older. Like, mm-hmm. he didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. And then you yeah. hear it. It was such a grooming process. And I'm like, God damn it, Michael. Yeah. God damn yeah. it, Michael. Even if he didn't do anything, there was definitely some some grooming, some situations going on. Oh, <laughs> Michael. Yeah. What the fuck? What the fuck, Michael? Yeah, I know. It's, it's like hearing that um, David Bowie had was kind of uh, had some questionable relationships, and, and yeah, it's just it's sad when you hear that your heroes are sometimes bad people. So it's one of those situations where you can appreciate the art and not the artist, and you can mourn the person that that they were, but still appreciate their art. I try to tell people that when they're like, "Oh, we're gonna boycott this person, this person," I'm like, "We gotta appreciate the art." Appreciate the yeah. art. Because there's a thing, like, there's always people, like, support presidents or, like, George Washington, maybe Abraham Lincoln, or even Abraham Lincoln, who was, everyone said, like, oh, it was so great because he fought the Civil War and was going against the South. Or, like, mm-hmm. people try to connect him to freeing, like, people that are black. And yeah. it was so crazy because it's like, this guy literally had slaves. Yeah. <laughs> like, maybe yeah. he was like, I treat my slaves a little bit better. Oh, I give them three meals a day. Like, oh, praise you. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know, you still like, owned you, people, or thought you yeah. owned people. <laughs> thought you had the You're right like, he to own people. He treated them a little bit better, and he was fighting to give them a little more rights. You know, it's super. Is that weird, your but. your Lincoln? Is that your Lincoln impression? Because <laughs> he <laughs> sounds like, like he's from the do. south. <laughs> Why are all my impressions from the south? <laughs> I don't know. Have you noticed that? It's even yeah. so. I always tease Mark, who is my hubby. I always tease him when he kind of acts a little redneck because I'm from Minneapolis and he's from northern Minnesota, which is a little bit more rural. And so every time I, like, joke about him, I always go super southern at a banjo. I'm like, hey, I'm Mark. Ding, 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 ding. Like, every time he says something super rednecky, I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm like, I'm going to go burn garbage outside. I'm like, ding, 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 ding. Which I don't know why my... My banjo always sounds like you're in an Asian restaurant, but <laughs> it's like a good Asian like restaurant like jam. No, I can't. Then, I'm like, hearing it. <laughs> so every time you're in an Asian restaurant, you hear ding 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 ding. That's my country banjo. Uh-huh. And, like I always end southern. I don't know. I don't know why it is Southern. I, even I do a better impression of your husband than than you do. What's your impression? Oh, oh, I'm yeah. Mark. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> Give me my natty, my natty ice. Gotta get my beer. <laughs> Just love a fucking natty ice. Yeah. Monster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if well, if natty so ice wants to sponsor us, uh, Danielle's husband is a big fan. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. If natty not. ice would sponsor us, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> If Natty Ice would sponsor us, that would be like the real deal because I think we give everything to Natty Ice. Like we are a Natty Ice family. I'm not a beer person, but we we're a Natty Ice family over here. So sponsor if you're getting us, beer, natty you're ice. getting Natty Ice. You're getting that Natty. <laughs> getting that Natty. Uh, but anyway, we really went off the rails here. Yeah, we did, and it's. We kind of talked at the beginning of, like, the second entrance that we, this is, we did the beginning kind of a while ago, like a month or a half ago, and then this is the end, and we just want to give you guys more stuff, because we like you guys, and everyone's been so supportive and awesome. It's been an amazing October. Yeah. Like, this is one for the books. I, we, I, everybody's been so gracious and, and making us just feel like a million bucks. <laughs> I appreciate everyone, and you have only a few more days till the 31st. Mm-hmm. Listen to our first three episodes. There is going to be a, like we said, a code word. And then past that, you can look on our page and kind of see other ways that you can go into our drawing at the end of the month. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's going until midnight on on Halloween. So mm-hmm. you party on Halloween, come back, get your last code word in before we shut her down. 
And then send us your booze. Like, even this episode, send us your booze, send us pictures, send us anything. Even if it's just for us, we would love it. Um, send it to girl. It's literally girls gone weird email with email written out at gmail.com. We would love that. Send it to that. Or you can even send it to Facebook or Instagram. Look at our, if wherever you are, like, listen to this, you can. You can literally just search it, but just go under the thing and you can see our Instagram. And then also give us like five stars because that's our thing. Don't give us any less. Yes, please do. I know. If you give us less, like fuck off. Like if you don't like us, just like move on. Five stars are pretty cool. You know? I like five stars. Yeah. Yeah. It'd just be cool. It'd be cool. Be cool, bro. Bruh. As my kid goes, she, she says, bruh. She, says bruh. <laughs> she learned it at school. I don't know. She calls me bruh. <laughs> I'm like, okay, bruh. <laughs> it's like, hey, bro. Hey, bro. Yeah, give us five hey, stars, bro. bro. And send that to us because that gives you a point too. Tell us how cool we are. It's true. It's true. No, if you if you send us a review, you get four entries, remember? That's the big Woo! that's the big one. You have the mandatory code word. You send us your review, you get four entries. So We'll call yeah. it the big titty entry. That's pretty amazing. I mean, for to get yeah. all this stuff, that's pretty amazing. But yeah, that is. Although I do, I I require somebody send me a picture of Ghosty in their new home so that I can you know say hi and make sure they they went to a loving family. Oh my um, gosh, that's my only requirement. Go- Ghosty, we should have the person, if they get ghosty, you would get extra, extra points, and we would love you so much if you put ghosty in different situations. We should have that. Like, if you get ghosty and you win this, like, send us really cool pictures of where ghosty is. Like, travel with ghosty. Oh, yeah. Like, bring like ghosty. People, uh, Flat Stanley is the thing. Have you seen heard of Flat Stanley? Mm-mm. Kids do that in school. They'll make like a little cutout of a person and then they mm-hmm. give it to people and they're supposed to like take pictures of it like around the country, like mail it to somebody and take pictures yeah. in New Zealand or whatever. It's really cool. Do that with Ghosty, please. Yeah. Let Ghosty. Cause make Ghosty its own Instagram page. Yeah. Ghosty's been like on Nicole's desk for a while. We both love Ghosty. Ghosty's adorable. Like give Ghosty a good life for us. Mm-hmm. You have the chance please. to adopt Ghosty and like... Yep. For only free of charge, yeah. For free of charge, you can give Ghosty the next life. So please do that. Yep, yep. We want to know all about it. Perfect. All right. All right. I suppose we should wrap this up. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. We'll see you guys soon, and we, we love, love you. you. Stay weird. Get weird with us next week. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Until next time. This has been Nicole and Denny with Girls Gone Weird. Feels kind of weird.